folks, Rob here. And I brought out a couple handguns today to talk about. Uh, and what spurred me with this idea was uh, when uh, Rob over at Firearms Attic the other day was uh, unboxing his uh, Ruger uh, new model Blackhawks. He has a pair of them now in uh, the uh, convertible models in 357 and 9mm. And I was thinking, you know, uh, 9mm in a, there's a, this is just a couple example of guns that were n not originally introduced in 9mm. And, uh, you know, it took several years on uh, a lot of companies' parts to introduce some of these in 9mm. And, uh, you know, the first is the, uh, the 1911 uh, we have here. And this is my Kimber Custom 2. And, uh, you know, uh, Colt introduced the 1911, you know, in 1911. And it was uh, adopted for military use. It was in military use up until, I guess, maybe the 2000s, somewhere in that area. It, you know, it, ser it served, uh, you know, a long time as our primary uh, sidearm for our military. You know, but it wasn't, uh, and uh, it was originally in 45 ACP. And it wasn't until uh, 1929 that it was uh, uh, chambered in 38 Super. And for many, many years, that's what you could get. The Colt 1911 was a 45 ACP or a 38 Super. And uh, it wasn't until 1950 that Colt introduced the first 1911 in 9mm. And... Uh, you know, it just wasn't uh, a caliber that was, I don't think, really caught on, really popular in the 1911 platform. Uh, maybe in the last few years, it's become more popular. Uh, I don't know why Colt decided to make the 1911 in 9mm. You know, the 9mm has you been used prolifically overseas, you know, for many uh, governments and agencies and police forces uh, primarily use 9mm or 380. Uh, a lot of them only use 380. But my opinion is they were probably developing it for maybe some kind of contract for uh, overseas law enforcement, uh, military use, uh, since it was so popular in the United States as a 45 and was in service as our service weapon. Uh, that, you know, if they chambered one in 9mm, maybe it would be adopted by other countries. So, that's just my theory maybe on it. But it wasn't until 1950 that you've seen the 1911 uh, come out in 9mm. Now, like I said, I don't think it really ever caught on here in the beginning because people just love their 45 ACPs. And, uh, you know, we, that was still the era of revolvers. Most police forces were carried revolvers. You know, the 9mm was a, a foreign round, really. And uh, I just think there were a lot of reasons why maybe in the beginning it wasn't as popular as it has become to be today. Now, that's not to say that it's still the most popular round in 9mm. I'd say that it's typically not. But uh, my example here, my Kimber uh, 1911, is chambered in 9mm. Now this is a full-size government model handgun, and it's fairly heavy, but the 9mm in this handgun is just a dream to shoot. It has no recoil. It's just, it's just a pleasure to shoot this gun in 9mm. And not that the 45 is a, is a bad round, but this uh, gun is exceptional uh, as far as a... Uh, a gun to take to the range, a, ho a home defense gun. Uh, would you carry it? Probably not. You know, with the advent of most uh, polymer frame, lightweight, uh, nine millimeters that have a lot higher capacity. This one has a capacity of nine rounds. So uh, probably not a gun you would carry today. And that's probably one of the pitfalls of, uh, you know, the nine millimeter in the 1911 too, uh, is its weight. Uh, but it is such a uh, economical round to shoot. It's uh, so uh, lightweight or light recoiling. It's just a a really sweet round for the 1911. And uh, this is one of my favorite guns. And uh, I'm glad that the uh, 
the companies kept on, uh, you know, innovating and building their guns in the 9mm 1911 platform because, you know, they are a joy to shoot. Uh, I don't know, uh, you know, like I said, I don't know how they would rank in sales in the 1911 platform, but I'd have to say it would be behind 45 and 10 millimeter. Uh, so anyway, that is a gun that just was never originally designed to be a nine millimeter that has adapted itself to nine millimeter and done so exceptionally well, in my opinion. Now, another gun is our, our Ruger, uh, Blackhawk over here, our, our uh, new model Blackhawk, and this is the uh, convertible. This is 357, 38, and in the chamber in there we have the nine millimeter uh, cylinder. So you know, uh, the first uh, probably time we seen a semi-automatic uh, cartridge used in a revolver was during World War One. Um, you know, there was a handgun shortage in the military needed 45 ACPs. And so uh, the M1917 came about. And it was made by both uh, Smith & Wesson and Colt. They both had their versions of the M1917. And it used half-moon clips in order to uh, uh, headspace the, uh, the cartridge off of the uh, half-moon clip and for extraction. You know, you, it's a rimless case so uh, you can't extract there's nothing to catch the uh, extractor on most pistols or revolvers i should say so they use half moon clips or moon clips as a way to extract now that's not a big issue with the single action revolver because it does not uh, depend on a half moon clip in order to headspace you know these headspace and i will take this uh, cylinder out and we'll we'll demonstrate how this this platform is really well suited for a semi-automatic round so if you look down the chamber you'll see there's a little there's a step down there and that's it that's the end of your nine millimeter chamber and the way it head spaces is it head spaces off this rim you know there's a rim around there that's prevalent and sticks up when you drop this in here it head spaces off the rim. Um, so you don't have that issue and you don't have the extracting I issue because you use your uh, extractor, your extractor rod to extract your round. So in the uh, single action revolver, this using a semi-automatic uh, round is not a problem. And uh, this gun too is a full size you know, heavy revolver, and it is unloaded, as you see, and shooting 9 millimeter in that thing is, is almost like shooting 22, not hardly, but you know, it's, it's light recoiling, and the thing about this is it's economical to shoot, uh, in today's ammo shortage times, try finding a box of 38s or 357 magnums, and, uh, you know, uh, even nine millimeter, the target ammo today is expensive, but it's a whole lot less expensive than 38 or 357 Magnum. So it allows you to shoot this gun and to shoot it economically and to shoot it more. And, uh, but you know, these guns were a originally, uh, developed, uh, by Samuel Colt in what is it was 1873. Was it the 73, 1874? Uh, the Colt Peacemaker, this is kind of loosely, this is Ruger's, uh, you know, uh, take on it. This does use a hammer block uh, transfer bar safety, so it's, 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 it's similar, but not exact. It's not, uh, it's not a Colt Peacemaker, but it was 45 Long Colt was the original chambering of the 45, uh, you know, the Peacemaker. And uh, I'm, it was chambered in others, like 32, 30, I think, and there were some others. Uh, but, you know, it has a history of different chamberings. Uh, but, uh, you know, the 9mm 
There were no real 9mm revolvers until the 80s when Ruger and Smith & Wesson decided to uh, jump into the market and uh, that started the whole 9mm revolver thing. Still not something that's real popular due to the fact that most revolvers have to use a half moon clip or a moon clip in order to extract the round. Uh, there have been a few designs that uh, have circumvented that and had these extractors that you know they're really complex and uh, uh smith and wesson actually come up with, with one in the 80s uh i think it was a 527 don't quote me on that uh that use they say the uh i was reading an article on it yesterday and they said they it was probably the most expensive uh revolver smith and wesson ever cost smith and wesson the most to make because of the ink intricacies of the way the extractor works and so that was something that not never really caught on but you know the thing that also hurt them in the 80s was the advent of polymer guns coming on the market um, you had uh, you know Ruger and Smith and Wesson seen an opportunity here because uh, police forces were going away from the 38s and 357s that they'd been carrying and going more towards the nine millimeters and this was an attempt to, uh, you know, build a gun that uh, some of these police forces that use revolvers could uh, upgrade to a 9mm and uh, still use a weapon that they were familiar with. And uh, so, but, you know, with the advent of the Glock and uh, the polymer frame guns with higher capacities, you know, it's just, it was uh, an idea that was uh, a good idea. Uh, for a short-term solution for a problem that uh, wouldn't take long to solve. So with the uh, polymer guns coming on and the high capacities, you know, the need for a six-shot service revolver was just not there. So anyway, guys, just this is just kind of my take on it. I, you know, done a little research. Uh, I read a little bit, you know. I probably got some things wrong in there. So if I did, you know, correct me on them. Um, uh, you know, I tried to read up a little bit on the history of when these guns were first turned into nine millimeters and, you know, what the reasoning before, for them was. And, uh, you know, that's kind of my take on it. So anyway, I appreciate you watching the video and until the next one, we'll see you guys later.